All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. And my guest today, welcome him back into the fold. Jose, what's going on? Mike, great to be here, man. I appreciate you reaching out. And I'm excited to, to catch up and dive deep into the last 17 years. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. But I got to ask you, Jose, starting off, when 2022 started, would you have ever thought that talking about your time on the real world on a podcast show would ever be on a bingo card of yours? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. It's interesting. Um, the last, I'd say, 13 years um, were just kind of something that I thought the real world was a great experience. I enjoyed it, but it was a previous life, right? And I've been just so focused on what I'm working on now and what I'm building that I, I never thought that I'd start off, or I guess middle of the year, now talking about my experience from uh, 17 years ago. Would you say that you wanted to make like a, a large effort to kind of, I don't want to say like a race, but distance that chapter of your life? Because I think a lot of people would notice they almost like couldn't find the trace of you for a while. Was that intentional? Did you want to be like a ghost in a sense? <laughs> so it was interesting. So we did, uh, we shot Ruled Key West in 05 and then it aired in 06. And I knew going into this that this was going to be an incredible chapter in my life. I was going to, you know, have a ball, travel, meet some really incredible people and, and make memories with my six other roommates. But I always knew that I didn't want this to be like a, a lifelong thing. Right. I knew that I didn't want to be like a reality TV personality for the rest of my life. So I don't want to say it was intentional, but I knew that I didn't want it to be. It, I, let me rephrase that. I knew it wasn't it wasn't intentional that I wanted to kind of just drop off the face of the earth. But uh, I, I knew that I didn't want it to kind of define who I am as a person. Yeah, you kind of typically I see with reality people, they come off their original shows and then it's like a, a very fast reality no pun intended. It comes at you fast. You either have to like stay on the pot and keep kind of going in that route. And then you're kind of pigeonholed in a sense, depending on how you look at it. Or you could take the route to where, you know, it's a fun story to tell 15 years from now. But I also have a family, a job, priorities, and that's kind of the route. So um, and we've seen uh, from your cast alone, we've seen very vast different routes taken like someone like you and Zach, I would say, took like the route that you and I are just referring to is just focusing on like, you know, personal stuff. Whereas like, and we've seen other people just, they kind of rode that wave of this is MTV and I want it to be part of my uh, footprint here. So kudos to them, right? I, it's, it's funny. I, I, I think in the beginning of this year, one of my cast members reached out to me and um, we were just kind of catching up and uh, I really kind of started to, to dive a little bit deeper into what everybody else was doing, right? I think the last time I saw them was in 2008 at the Real World Award Bash. And um, I've stayed, you know, in touch via social with a couple of them through the years, but not really anything in depth. So when I learned that, you know, or learned about what some of my cast members were doing, I was like, man, they've really made a career out of this. And, and that's awesome. You know, it's, it's really neat to see where everyone is now and what they're doing and how successful they are. Yeah. Well, you and I spoke off recording about kind of how like you and I got acquainted and how I kind of was more so, you know, found you again. Um, how, would you say like you were trying to kind of like creep out a little bit more uh, recently, you know, because we spoke about the comment on the 30 year anniversary of uh, the real world. Are you like trying to dip your toes maybe back into being seen again or? Great question. So uh, now we're, we're, you're opening up a big can right now, Mike. <laughs> uh -oh. but it's all, it's all good things. It's all good things. So uh, after my real world experience, um, traveled, you know, lived um, an incredible life for, I guess, the, the, the following two, three years. Uh, did the bar appearances, you know, spoke at the schools, really, really enjoyed myself. And then um, 2009, things kind of dried up a bit. Um, and then 2010, I decided to go back to school. So I went back to school and then uh, I graduated in 2011 because when I left to do uh, Real World Key West, I only had a year or two left of school. So um, I went back, finished in 11 and then, you know, got a real job. And I was working in the tech industry and um, really working with some high level folks. And um, I knew that I needed to separate myself from reality TV, right? Because I had a couple things going against me. First, I was the youngest person in the room a lot of the times. So I was working with C-level executives. And to, to overcome, you know, that, 
in addition to that, I didn't want them to know this is a guy that was on reality TV, you know, acting a fool, you know, five years ago, whatever that was. So I really wanted to separate the two. And after that, um, I moved to DC and did all kinds of crazy things with work. And then I moved back to Florida and I started to build a business. So for the last 10 years, I've worked in tandem in the tech world as well as building my business. And in April uh, of this year, I decided to step away from um, Fortune 500 in the, t the tech world and, uh, and really focus on my business and, uh, and starting to, to kind of come out of the box a bit. And, uh, and that's why I'm a little bit more open to it. So I reactivated an old Instagram and uh, started to be a little bit more social on that. So to answer your question, um, yes, you're right. That, that is why I'm, I'm starting to kind of step back into it a bit. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but um, I'm not as reserved as I once was. Yeah, I do talk about that a lot, too, with the business side of things. I ask a string of my recent guests that ultimately kind of took like the route of more so business than reality. If like doors were more so opening or slamming shut when uh, going to apply for jobs, would, it, would yeah. you like have any experiences personally where, um, you know, you go for like a job and um, maybe employers just don't want anything to do with you because of the real world? Thankfully, no. <laughs> a lot of the folks. Sorry, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of the folks that I was interviewing with when I was, you know, working in that space were older and really had no idea. Um, you know, they didn't, they didn't watch the real world. Now their kids may have, or their assistants, or whoever else may have. But thankfully, um, when folks started to find out, I was already ingrained in the uh, in the culture and uh, had some respect from you know what I was doing day to day that it wasn't a big deal but during the interview process no it never was brought up to me and I find it wild because you were studying pretty much what you're doing now right prior to going on to the real world you were already like I don't want to say like a fully grown businessman but you were like pretty deep into the process of becoming one if not already one when uh, you were going on to Key West right yeah, so when I, I was 19, when I was flown down to Key West to start this incredible experience, and I had already purchased two homes, right? So I was on my way already to, you know, doing the whole real estate entrepreneur um, thing, uh, and I was an investor. So yes, even beforehand, and then through the through the years, the the, uh, the recession happened and all kinds of stuff. But but yeah, I, I had an early jump. I started young, and and that's what I'm what I'm doing today. Yeah. Um, what maybe was your upbringing like? Because I think like the very first uh, clip of you, they had of you saying, you know, childhood was rough, came from, you know, rough, rough kind of area. What was your upbringing like? Yeah, great question. So I grew up actually where you're from, right? Um, in New York City, uh, the borough of Brooklyn, Brooklyn. and was, uh, was raised in uh, the Bedford-Stuyvesant area, which, you know, 37 years ago is not what it is today. Um, but, uh, you know, I was born, um, my mom was 17 when she had me, you know, we were on welfare and the projects, that whole deal and, uh, really saw the struggle from, from a, an early age. And, um, as I got older and, and still saw the struggle, I knew that that's what I didn't want. Right. But I watched my mom kind of, you know, build herself up and work hard and do what she needed to do to provide for, um, my family. So, uh, so that was kind of the beginning. And, and I think it really instilled a lot of grit. And, uh, and resilience, right? And the ability to, to work hard and, and know what you want. And, uh, you know, nobody's gonna stop you but yourself. So uh, those were, were the beginnings. And um, that's that's kind of how I grew up. Yeah, you could kind of tell with like the demeanors of all the castmates coming on to the show. Uh, the ones with like the wide-eyed like reactions, like this is insane. Like those yeah. are like the, you know, this is all like foreign. Whereas like you could tell with your demeanor, like you were already like, all right, I've, I've been through the mud. This is only like gravy on top of the experiences that I've already had in my life. Yeah, no, it was, it was, um, you know, I will say, you know, living in that house in Key West, it was, you know, incredible, right? I, I had never lived in a house that, that large before um, and that nice, um, although it was crazy, you know, the decorations and the decor was, was nuts. But, um, but yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was something that uh, I, I took for, I didn't take for granted. I enjoyed every moment of it and um, I, I enjoyed the experience. Yeah, the hurricanes wasn't uh, exactly a great uh, opening sequence, though. Did you? Did they like delay the uh, start of filming? Did they? Or yeah, great question. So it, it's funny because uh, when I went through the whole casting deal, I was living in in Tallahassee, so I went to school, 
And when I found out it was going to be in Key West, I was like, ah, okay, it's Florida, but it's Key West. I'd never been there before. So before actually going to Key West, I, I had flown down to my mom's house. At that point, she had lived in Fort Lauderdale. So I was the one that was going to be driving in. It looks like everybody else flew in, right? So um, I was going to be driving to pick up one of my roommates. And, uh, and then the hurricane, you know, just showed up out of nowhere. And everything was delayed for, I'd say, about a week. But during yeah. that time, I hung out with, with my family down in Fort Lauderdale where, you know, the rest of my, my roommates uh, weren't as lucky. They were stuck in hotels and um, by themselves for, you know, without power, even some of them uh, for a week or so. Thankfully, where I was in Fort Lauderdale, it wasn't too bad. We had power. I was just kind of a waiting game. Mm -hmm. What maybe did uh, prompt you to try out? Like, I wanted to hear kind of about uh, your process itself. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my process is actually really funny. So back in 04, you know, I'd always watched the show. Um, but, and you may be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I never saw, you know, up into, until my season, somebody like me, right? There had been some Hispanics, there had been, you know, um, some minorities, but I never saw a straight Hispanic male. Mm -hmm. So, man, you know, I really want to be on the show. I think I could add, you know, some value and really give them a different perspective on things. So I sent in a tape in, in 2004 and it was just me in kind of my room, just, you know, being silly and um, sent it off. And that was it. And I never heard back from for like a year. And I was like, I got my tape, no big deal. <laughs> so continued on with my life. And um, I saw that they were having an open casting. So at the time I'd lived in Tallahassee, which is the capital of Florida, where FSU is Florida State. And uh, but the casting was in Gainesville. So that's where the University of Florida is. So I've always been the type not to really say what I'm doing, just kind of do it. So one morning I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just rock and roll and just leave. So I got in my car and I drove the two and a half hours to Gainesville. And it was at this place called Gator City Bar and Grill. And I showed up and there was a, a line, um, you know, out the, out the bar. So I waited and they took probably groups of 10 and uh, they, they sat them in a the table and um, then they just asked questions, right? And uh, everybody, of course, trying to, you know, show up and, and, and show out um, was acting crazy, you know, loud and obnoxious and just saying things that were off the wall just to really try to get attention. And I just sat there and I answered the question and they asked a couple other questions along the way. But I wasn't trying to put on a show here, right? Because that's just yeah. not. So afterwards, uh, one of the, the casting folks pulled me aside and said, hey, uh, we really want to you know, chat with you. Can you fill this out? And come back tomorrow and I was like oh man okay yeah so you know I was a broke college kid at the time so I drove back to Tallahassee two and a half hours away and then I came back the next morning and it was kind of a one-on-one -on -one interview and I guess they liked what they saw I made it up to uh, the semifinals and they flew us out to Raleigh North Carolina and um, I remember that was really awkward because I remember meeting somebody um, she actually made it on I don't know if it was a um, a ro the road rules. She, her name was Lynette. She was she was wonderful. Um, oh, she uh, she did fresh meat. Fresh did meat. Her, oh. Put her on the challenge. Yeah. 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 She, okay, that's what it was. She was great. Uh, her and I met, and she was trying out for for Key West as well. And her and I stayed in touch. I think we're still friends on social. I don't know if she's remarried or what her deal is, but um, uh, went through that process. And I remember there were two women casting directors, and we were talking about dancing and music. And I was just like, yeah, no big deal. And they asked me to, to dance in front of the camera. And I was like, Are you oh, see? <laughs> but I was like, okay, yeah. So I just, I don't know, it was really awkward and weird, but I, but I did it. And uh, we just continued on the process. It was several interviews. I remember them flying me to LA and kind of, you know, finishing up out there. And then I got the news that I made the cast. So it was neat. It was a good experience. I do hear that it's a bit of a razor edged process. Like they really, I don't know, did they do that thing to you where they try to make you cry? Or did that not? They didn't no. do that. Okay. Cause, no, no, no. Because a lot, a lot, a lot of people that go on these tryouts say like there's like an unspoken thing. Like the producers try to like find out like what makes you cry. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there were some hot topics and things that they talked about, but you know, they they didn't make me cry or, or really try to make me cry. Mm -hmm. um, they knew what was um, what I what I held close to my chest and what was really important to me, and it was interesting because um, kind of going through that process, I noticed some of the things that I talked about 
in my castmates. So it was, it was really, it, it's a chemistry experiment, right? Like, can you, it, can you pinpoint one of those things in particular off the top of your the, head? Yeah. So uh, Paula, who's, who's wonderful, like love Paula. She's incredible. You know, she's got a family now. She's doing great. Um, her, my mom was, was, you know, involved in some, some really tough relationships early on and um, in her life. Right. And um, Paula was too. And some of that stuff played out on the show and uh, some of the, the, the things like that. And then, you know, me talking about wanting uh, a strong woman uh, to be around me and into my presence. And, and that was Janelle. So it's like little things like that, you know, that, uh, that, that I noticed um, in my castmates. So it was, it was, it's interesting. It's, it's really just these, these folks behind the scenes, finding different people and, and putting together the, the chemistry experiment. Yeah. You and Janelle had some funny uh, <laughs> arguments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we sure did. And, uh, you know, now I couldn't even tell you what they were about. Um, I, I just know we had them. And there was one in particular that well, I remember it being outside. And I don't know, probably had a couple drinks and was just silly. And her and I got into it. And um, yeah, <laughs> just, just, you know, things, things that happened along the way. But for the most part, I thought I was pretty, pretty well behaved during my time in, in Key West and, and pretty pretty reserved um most of the time was that intentional did you or is that like just pretty much who you are like it's very easy to pinpoint and be like you know he's a normal authentic guy like that's why a lot of people could like sympathize and relate to you because they're just normal people you know what i mean like people you're not gonna be a guy that's like standing on top of a bar and like doing like a toast not like that kind of guy but you're a guy that like reads the room you know what i mean um so, and now that's probably how you were typecasted. But in this type of like question, I guess, would you say that maybe any part of you was conscious and how you behaved or acted? Like, were there any parts of you that would hold back in certain things? Like, as I remember this one scene, um, I think Johnny brought back like two girls or something like that. And then like, you just went inside and just didn't choose to <laughs> hang out with them. <laughs> so uh, yes and no, right? So let's, let's kind of unpack that. Uh, again, like I mentioned early on, I knew that the real world was a chapter in my life, right? I knew it was going to be a great experience and I knew that I wanted something else afterwards. So to answer your question, some of that was very conscious, right? Like I was like, okay, I can't act a fool here. Like I got I to gotta make sure that, uh, that, I, that I'm able to, to walk away from this and, and still have uh, my, my, my dignity and self-respect, right? So I think some of that was calculated. Um, there were instances on the show that didn't air where, um, you know, there were some, oh gosh, I'm married now, Mike. <laughs> hey, man. Is, all right. Uh, that, that, um, that showed a different side of, of me and, and, and that's okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, some of that was, was conscious. And I don't know if that particular time when Johnny brought the, the two girls back, if I was into them or what the situation was, I did date, a girl while I was in Key West there for a little while. And um, so I, I don't remember the timing, but. Is that, is that what didn't air? What's that? Is that what didn't air? You were not. Uh, no, no, no. She, I think she, she got some air time um, on the, on the show. They, they kind of lightly touched on our story, but there were, there were a couple other nights when, um, um, you know, I brought some folks back and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but that stuff didn't, didn't air. Um, so. You know, I guess I was just kind of casted as the um, diplomatic one, the diplomatic, the the professional, the, you know, the the minority that's trying to do something kind of, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's kind of wild uh, what, <laughs> what Johnny's been able to kind of parlay that stuff into. Like, I think at the and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but at the time, I really don't think that like reality TV had like a like sustainable finish to it like it was kind of like all right you go and do a real world show you'll do the challenges here and there you'll get some hosting gigs but like what he's parlay parlayed that into is quite incredible i must yeah. say you would probably know more about that than i would right because i don't know fully like what he's done and what he's doing all i read was that he's like the chance he's done he's done a bunch of challenges and like has won the most um yeah. at and I think he's got like some other shows going on. But um, prior to him, I think The Miz was, uh, was somebody that had done, you know, uh, 
parlayed real world to something else. And then Jamie Chung has done that from, from San Diego. But man, yeah, Johnny, I'm so happy for him. I mean, I haven't talked to him in years, but he was always one of those guys. He knew what he was doing in Key West, you know, from from showing up with the with the doll, you know, right away. You know, he he, he just was that 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 personality. Do, do you know what I'm talking about with the doll? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the blow up thing. Yeah. The blow up doll. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody was like, oh, this guy's just a character. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, good for him. I'm I'm so happy for him. Would love to catch up and see how he's doing otherwise. But from what I've read and, and from what I've talked to other folks, he's he's doing super well. Yeah. Uh, one of the scenes that's like engraved in my mind was when you and Zach got uh, picked by the house to be like the manager and like co-manager of yeah. your guys uh, work that you were starting and Svetlana's reaction and just going upstairs. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Svetlana. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Um you know, Zach and I working together and Svetlana wanted that role so hard. Oh, and yeah, she really kind of um, took it, took it, um, took it to heart that she didn't get selected. But, um, you know, it, it was, it was, it was fun. It was a funny time for sure. When, when would you say the last uh, you've heard from her would be? Because I think she's one of the people that's kind of even more so gone ghost. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I'd say probably 08, 09. Her and I did a bunch of uh, appearances. Yeah, a ton. I mean, I don't know what other cast, you know, what they did and, and how 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 that worked out for them. But our cast was rolling every weekend. We were making multiple appearances, really traveling a bunch. So during that 06 to 08 time, we were on the road a lot. And that's when I saw her the most. Um, the last time was either the Real World Bash or a time either right after that or right before. I just can't remember the timing. In Chicago, we did a, an event together out there. But I reached out to her on Instagram, just trying to say hello and, and see how she was doing. But I haven't received anything back. And I know a couple other um, cast members have reached out, gotten um, some responses via text, um, but nothing, nothing major. I hope she's doing well. Yeah. You know, some people look to kind of leave that in the past for good and just don't want anything to do with it at all. So if that's yeah. the route she's taking, you can't really fault her. You know what I mean? It's someone's decision. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I just, I just hope she's okay. Right, that's the biggest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully she'll, she'll respond to me one day and say, "Hey, she used to call me, uh, what is it? Jose Ole, Jose Ole, <laughs> doing good. Come to LA because I think that's where she's living." So. And I'd, I'd love to, to to take that opportunity to visit her. And, and you know, there's there's a several of the castmates. I think I was. No, Svetlana and I were the only two from the East Coast. Everybody else was was from the West Coast. So. Well, there's this old saying, East Coast, Beast Coast. I think yeah. East Coast, the best coast. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. Man. No doubt about it. So we'll see what the future holds. We'd love to, to, to reconnect with them, especially her, right? Um, yeah. See how were you doing a lot of modeling stuff, too? I think I might have seen uh, post-show as well. So we did, we did a couple things. Um, um, you know, nothing super major. But uh, we did a couple, and I'm not a tall, tall dude. Right? Uh, but it's funny because we tried to do uh, some uh, some speedo runway stuff. That was <laughs> that was funny. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I did some some print work and, and things like that. But um, but yeah, yeah. After the show, we we definitely did some stuff. Did you enjoy those, or was that something you were like a little out of your comfort zone? Or yeah, it, you know, it was yeah, I'm totally out of my comfort zone. I'm trying to yeah, no, for sure, not something. <laughs> <laughs> that uh I, I really um you know would seek out to do right those were opportunities that really kind of fell in our in our lap and and we, we took them and ran with them so um but yeah definitely not something i'd like to do on a day-to-day -day. well i don't think another thing you would want to do on a day-to-day -day is get stranded at the gym when uh one of your roommates <laughs> is supposed to be picking you up <laughs> yeah. uh, was it tyler tyler left tyler yeah. yeah 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 so it's funny. Uh, after the show, we we all got DVDs of the show, and um, I watched it in real time. I, I I know that's like a thing that not a lot of cast members do, yeah. but I, I certainly um, you know did. But I haven't watched it since. So uh, I do remember that time. I do remember getting stranded at. Uh, oh gosh, what was that called? It was like a weird name that uh, that gym. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I didn't I didn't like that, and I didn't appreciate that, Tyler. <laughs> you had to walk home, right? You walked about halfway home and Johnny found you? Yeah, I think so. Either that or I had like a bike or something. 
Um, but yeah, it was, it was, so we weren't in Key West, Key West. I don't know if, if you knew that we were uh -huh. actually in Key Haven. So it was like seven miles outside of Key West. So, um, yeah, that was a, if I walked halfway, maybe a three and a half mile walk. That, that wasn't fun. It was nice and hot for sure. That house still exists to my knowledge. It does. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's used as an Airbnb and, uh, and they've kept the colors and, and you know that whole real world personality thing going and uh, i'd love to to drive by and take my family to see it for sure well knock on wood that house could in the future jose come in handy because i don't know if you heard this or not they've been doing uh real world homecomings and they've been uh revisiting and bringing back people um in their cast and revisiting seasons and uh, I think a lot of people have been speculating that Key West might be on the horizon. Um, is that something you'd be open to? And has there been any feelers yet or no? Yeah, great question. So uh, that's actually how I kind of got back into finding out what's going on with this whole reality world, right? So um, Janelle reached out at the beginning of the year. And she's like, hey, Jose, you know, how, how are you? Or, and call me. And I have, you know, Janelle and I, there's no bad blood. I mean, what happened 17 years ago happened 17 years ago. Um, but she doesn't reach out like that, right? And uh, she reached out and was like, um, was like, hey, you know, there's this thing called the homecoming. Um, is that something that you'd be open to? Because nobody really knows what you're doing. And, um, you know, you've kind of fallen off the face of the earth. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, oh, well, well tell me more. Because literally, Mike, like I have not watched any challenges. I have not watched any other real worlds. Like I've been disconnected. Um, and she's like, uh, she's like, yeah, I'd, I'd encourage you to kind of just check it out and, and see if it's something that that you'd be you'd be into. So I did. You know, I I, I watched a couple. Um, I just finished up the New Orleans season. And uh, Chef's Kiss, might I add, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. good, so good. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I, I would absolutely be open to, to doing that in the, in the future. Do you know where any of that stuff stands? As far as I, as far as I know, uh, there really hasn't been any motion made towards a, a fourth homecoming yet, but I know New Orleans is up for, they were just nominated for an award. They didn't win it. They were a finalist. They lost to, I think, RuPaul's Drag Race, but just to be in the same category as like the Kardashians and like all these shows is just an honor. Um, it speaks for itself alone, but they're up for another thing too coming up. So I just think with the reception and everything and being up for those awards, it'd be very hard to not kind of renew for a fourth and fifth homecoming at the very minimum, I think. Yeah. I, I think that'd be great. And I, I enjoyed all, uh, all three seasons that, uh, that I, I watched and my buddy, uh, one of my buddies was on the, I guess the second one and, uh, you oh, know, yeah. The experience so yeah I'm, I'm totally open to it would love to revisit key west and catch up with the old roomies and hash out some you know some times when i got left at the gym and uh when janelle and i got into it outside you know love to, to revisit those moments and laugh and, and really talk about things that um we didn't really talk about while, while in key west i think that um with all the hurricanes and all the stuff that that we had to deal with uh we were gone a lot of the time Right. We were just evacuating and dealing with messes and um, our, our experience really, you know, got cut a little bit, I'd say, from, from that. Now, on the other hand, you know, people probably love that. Right. Because there's a lot of action and things like that. But I think we had uh, seven or, or six other um, really dynamic and intelligent folks. And I'd love to, to really kind of just chat with them and, and really hear uh, more about their perspective on things in this, this crazy world that we live in today. Yeah, there's a lot that happened in 2005. Uh, 2005, right, was when the season? So we, we shot in 05, yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of things that transpired in 2005 that I feel like if you tap into in 2022 or 23, whichever, let's just say hypothetically for story purposes that season occurs then, um, that like I think if you hash out today could serve as like good television and also be like educational to the people watching it that, wow, this is – something that's really real and um in the current climate could be met a different way but sure yeah no absolutely i think it, i think it would be great and um you know just kind of thinking through the cast even just to, to see like zach i haven't seen zach and gosh i haven't really talked to him in years um just to see everybody and, and just catch up i think would be really cool
Did Janelle get into like any specifics as far as like, all right, the guys like the cast are talking about this, we're all on board, or anything like that? Yeah, so she was more so just kind of trying to check my pulse, right? Like, hey, because okay. nobody really, I hadn't talked to them, and nobody really knew what I was doing, um, and and what you know my my temperature would be on doing something like that. So there were no specifics on, you know, if it was going to happen or when it was going to happen, just more so, okay, Jose, you know, may be on board, uh, but check it out. And then, you know, after I watched a couple, I reached out to her and, and then I watched uh, her challenge. And um, cause again, I hadn't watched any of that in years and, and was like, man, this is really cool. You know, her and I corresponded a bit and told her, I told her how proud of, of her I was. Um, you know, for, for being, um, you know, older and still really kind of knocking it out. She looks great. She performed super well. And I was pulling for her to win it all. But, you know, maybe next time. Yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I honestly think you guys would probably be able to field most of the cast. I just think the only wild card in this whole equation would be Svetlana, you know? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And, um, yeah, I would... And I don't know, I think what, what season one, they didn't have everyone, but the rest of the seasons have had the seven. I think the one with John season had holdouts, but they also had replacements. So that way they had seven. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, I think there's enough, you know, dynamic situations with uh, the six of us. If Svetlana decides not to, um, that they could still really, you know, make a cool season out of it, but we, it wouldn't be the same without her. And, and we hope that, you know, she would decide to, to do it if we get that call, right? I mean, who, who knows what's going to happen? Um, there's, you know, how many seasons? 30, 25 total? 32. 32, look at that. 32, yeah. you know, 31 other great seasons as well. Well, no, if you did, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of other seasons as well, but... Um, yeah, I'm totally open to it and would love the opportunity, you know, should it present itself. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the burning question on a lot of people's minds, too, since you mentioned watching Janelle's challenges, is everybody's probably curious, why didn't Jose do a challenge? Were you called a handful of times, and did you ever consider doing it, or was it just an outright no? Why did, we, uh, never, why did it never come to fruition? Yeah, so, okay, there's a lot to this. Um, I was called. Um, and then there was times where I said no, but I'll kind of give you some backstory here. So from 06, we aired till 08. I mean, that's when it was prime time. We were traveling a bunch. There was a lot of gigs. A lot of money was being made during that time. And I'd gotten a couple calls from um, the Buna Murray team. Hey, are you interested in doing this challenge? And I was open to it at the time, but never really got, um, hey, we want you on it, right? They just were calling to kind of check if I was interested. Yeah. And then... That was kind of it. So I was like, oh, never got the confirmation. And maybe I just wasn't interested enough or interesting enough, right? Maybe they just didn't want me, which which is okay. So uh, then uh, I continued to, to do my thing. And then 09 and, and 2010, I decided to go back to school. And then when I finished in 2011, I got 2011, 2012, I got a call like, hey, we want you to be on the show. But at this time, I was working for you know, one of the biggest tech companies in the world. And I just started and I was like, man, I cannot pull away from this opportunity to, to do the challenge. Uh, so I told the girl, I was like, hey, you know, thank you so much. I'm just just not not interested at the time. And she was like, okay, we'll keep you in mind for, for the next one. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, then they called again about six, seven months later. And at, that, at this point, I was just too deep into the career and, and, and my life. And I was just like, you know what? thank you, but just no thank you. I'm, I'm just not interested. Uh, please take me off the list. And that was the last time they called me. <laughs> that was it. So I probably pissed them off. Who knows? Um, yeah. But if anybody's watching this, the, the, the power to put me on something, I would love, love, love the opportunity to do a challenge, especially with, at the space that I'm, I'm in in my life now. Um, man, that'd be super fun. I'd love the opportunity to really uh, get out there and, um, and, and knock it out. Yeah, I, I've noticed that a lot, too. They send out what people call availability calls when they go, hey, would you be interested? But the availabilities are more of just like a gauge, whereas like then there's the final call, which is like, hey, this is when we're shooting like yeah. pen to paper here. What do we what's the answer kind of thing? Whereas sure. it seems like the first time with you, you kind of got the availabilities. And then that second time around in 2011, 2012 and so on was 
kind of a pen to paper type of situation or close to it. And then on your end, it was kind of timing just didn't align. And then once you tell them like, hey, take me off the list, that's kind of like your, that's like your death sentence on that, that point. Absolutely, man. That was it. They, they uh, said, okay, this guy. And I, and I stopped getting Christmas cards from them too. So, <laughs> Oh, they actually send those? I didn't know oh, that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah, we used to get we used to get Christmas cards, um, you know, just like, hey, you know, Buna Murray, here you go. Thank you for you know being part of the family. But I haven't got one of those. And I've moved a bunch, too. So who knows? But, um, yeah, I haven't gotten one of those in a while. Oh, man. When that stopped coming, I was like, oh, man, I really met, pissed them yeah, off. Yeah, but the Christmas card was the deal break. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, I've been at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. a- any uh, big plans for the rest of this year or just still doing what you're doing and just working? Yeah, so um, I'm actually, you know, you, you kind of touched on it early on um, regarding kind of getting back out there, right? So I um, have stepped away from corporate America, really focusing on on my businesses and my family and really growing that and giving giving that my uh, my all, right? Because there was a time there for the last, gosh, two, three years where I was working, you know, 80, 100 hour weeks. And um, that's brutal, especially when you have kids and you have a wife and, you know, just a family. So um, had to make a decision, and um, in April, I um, I stepped away from from corporate America, and now I'm really just focused on that. So, with that said, I've got a little bit more time, so I'm I'm looking at getting a little bit more social, um, you know, kind of putting myself out there, showing what I'm doing. There's a lot of cool things that we're working on, so um, you know, be prepared. There's going to be some more content on on Instagram, and I'm going to start a, a YouTube. So, so yeah, it'll be it'll be really neat to to kind of see. Um, where that goes, um, especially in today's world where content is king. Yeah, I'm going to welcome you to the family, the YouTube family, man. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So that's really what I'm going to be working on the next six months um, in addition to, to growing growing the businesses. Do you want me – do you want to say your Instagram or do you want to keep that still private for right now? Or? No, no. So the Instagram is just Jose Tapia online. Um, that's, my, that's my handle. And um, I'm not sure. YouTube is probably the same thing. Jose Tappy online. Um, but yeah, you could you could find some stuff. I, I've got a, a video that's what I'm calling kind of like the catch up video for what I've been doing over the last 20 years. And uh, it'll update everyone on that. So that'll be really neat. And that should be released within the next week or so. So Oh, cool, cool. Send it to you, Mike, first before we, we release it. So it'll be cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I enjoy this. I enjoy kind of um, curating some cool content. And I'm showing, you know, my, my town and, and what we're what we're working on here. And I think, um, you know, a lot of people will be able to relate. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you again for coming on here. It was great kind of picking your brain on some of your experiences and kind of catching the folks up on what you've been up to. I think a lot of people were wondering if we'd ever hear from you again. Um, but here you are. And Jose, who knows what the future holds? In the future, you and I could be having a totally different discussion about another show if you end up on it because with the endless possibilities seemingly now with paramount plus and all the new buna murray production uh projects that have come out in the last year or so i think that a key west homecoming could potentially be on the horizon so you and i may have another chat at this yeah man i, I definitely would, would welcome that and look forward to that and i'm grateful that uh that you reached out and i enjoyed today and, and look forward to staying in touch For sure. I'll let you know when this is out, Jose. But uh, thanks again. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, Mike. You too, man. Take care.